Saw to you, Dave. Another Sunday, sitting and bullshitting. Hope y'all doing well. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna do a couple. I don't know, it's not really different because I sit here and bullshit, but you know, reflections of other people's videos that I kind of sort of watched this week and I guess got my gears turning. You know, sometimes other people spark your interest, right? Um, so I watched a video from Dirk the other day. It was basically Frank Fisher knife um, or a Fisher. I'm not sure if it's Frank Fisher. I get confused sometimes. But uh, Dirk did a good video. It was basically his grail model knife maker all that sort of thing um so it kind of got me my gears turning like um what is like reflecting on upon my collection like what was something that like i never thought i'd own that i own and i posted a video i mean a, a picture of it but it's this dollar bore um this one's been blasted i, I took it apart and blasted because i can't leave nothing alone but this is a maker and a knife that i never like never like this came out, this was made in 2016. Now that's probably, I, you know, that's pretty much my heyday. I think I probably bailed out around there, 2017 or probably something around there, 2016, 2017. I kind of got out of the hobby and then came back in, but after a few years anyhow. Um, but at that level, like that was like epitome of what I wanted. Like I, I just never thought I'd own one. Like, first of all, they're customs and they're from Croatia. I think that's where he's from. Uh, it's just something you don't see often, so it's not like you get a chance to handle them or really know what they feel like. Uh, and I was lucky enough to get handled just earlier um, this year. Is that last year? Or is this year? I think. And um, after that, I knew I'd had to have one. And then Carco Chris hooked me up with this one, so I ended up with this guy. But like, I'm just curious. Like, in your collection, is there one that you have that you never thought you'd own uh, that you kind of like still kind of geek out on when I? So when I carry this one, this is usually, this is usually kind of my Sunday knife. Like, you know, you save your, well, I, I guess traditionally like Sunday best, you know, kind of thing. Uh, this is kind of sort of what I think about it. I mean, I will carry it during the week, but like, I don't know. This is like, it just feels like a Sunday knife to me. I don't know why. It's just kind of weird that way. Um, just one that got me kind of thinking, man, and reflecting and, and gratefulness, I guess. Uh, multiple fronts, I guess. So I'm just curious, like, what you guys, and also like, <laughs> so it's, you watching other people's um, stuff. So Dirk had said something about it as a Rexford he was doing. And he mentioned something about uh, Skelton had done a video. And I don't watch a whole lot of Skelton's content because I kind of get that T&P syndrome. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, like you've watched enough nothing fancy videos over the years that as soon as the video comes on, your eyes start getting heavy and you start dozing off. That, that that's kind of what I get when I watch Skelton video. Like I get that whole, I've seen so many of his videos that like, <laughs> you know, like it puts me to, almost puts me to sleep. I mean, I love the content. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say anything negatively about the guy. I just, I've watched so many of his videos that like starts turning into the same thing and his voice kind of gets that monotone and I start getting heavy eyed. It's just something that happens, I guess. I don't know. Like, does anybody else suffer from the TNP syndrome? Like, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's one, maybe I'm on my own on this one. But he was talking about, um, uh, Rexford um and like the, I guess the value of that one was like close to $28,000 or something like that and like I don't ever see myself getting there but I, I didn't really see myself ever getting to a knife of this level uh and I didn't pay cash for this one I think I did put some cash on it and trade a bunch but like uh, I think this was somewhere around the $2,500 value and this is like this is that's up there for me man even for me and I know we're all at different levels and I would imagine like for most of my viewers, some people collect knives like me, but I, I would think the vast majority of probably are a little less stupid than I am with my money, uh, or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it kind of got me thinking about a lot of that stuff and, uh, you know, reflections, I guess. Um, so I, I just, I just popped to my mind. So I got to do it while I forget. I forgot to thank quite a few people. So Allison, which is Allison from, from Canada and on Instagram. And she'll probably be in the comments as well. Um, I need to thank her cause she bought the saw a while back. I still haven't got the whole thing to her. She lives in Canada. So we had to take it apart and do the customs thing. So she's got the blade and some hardware, but I got to wait and stagger stuff so that their government doesn't see something because the last time it was like in customs for like a week and a half or something like that or held extra for a week and a half 
Um, so I got to thank her. She donated a knife, which is a Corvid XL, which is something I never really was on my radar or anything like that. Uh, and I'll probably turn around and give it away after a while, but I, I haven't really done anything with it. It's in the drawer over there for a giveaway. I'll probably do something to it and then give it away. Um, so thank you, Allison. Also, uh, Denise donated more stickers and I, I should have mentioned it at the time and I'm an idiot cause like, I know I send you guys packages. Hang on one second. Let's see if I can find them. What the hell did I do? And never mind. It's going to be too hard to get to. Um, so I mean to put stickers in every package I sent, but it's usually one of those, I get done doing a project and then I got to pack it up and send it. And so pff, forgets, you know, like I'm just trying to pack it up and get it gone. And I, I, so if I've sent you a knife back and forgot to send stickers, my bad, I should have put stickers in it. But, but Denise, thank you again for sending more stickers. Um, so I've got two stickers and both of them were because of Denise. So rock on Denise. I appreciate you. <clears throat> and Dan, appreciate you sending that knife to Hot Rod. She really enjoys it too, bro. Um, so I think I've caught up on my thank yous. I missed you. I apologize. Um, I don't have a limited amount of work to show this week. Um, you know, it seems like for me, even as a machinist, it always kind of worked that way too. Like the winter time when you'd rather work more, be indoors, make more money and that sort of thing, the work's low. So you don't have the whole lot of work. In summertime, we'd rather be outside doing shit, springtime, that sort of thing. You always got way too much work and you got to stay at the work and do extra. Well, that's kind of the same um, we're finding with our business as well as like when the weather's nicer, uh, that's when we got to work more. So it's, I don't know, a little bit after eight now. Um, me and Hot Rock got to go take care of a few cases. Um, so, you know, I don't have, a, Sunday used to be a day that I could kind of sort of spend more time in the, in the shop, but like it's becoming less and less. And, and this week was that way. So that's why I'm doing less work. And that's also why I think for now, if I've already talked to you about sending a knife, or we already talked, uh, we're good. You can do whatever you want, send it, whatever else. I just think I'm going to slow, it's going to be slower processing because of the amount of time. And so I'm not going to take any more future, like if I haven't talked to you about anything, I don't want to take any more issues or anything right now. I want to get caught up. I need to still, that manual mill is still sitting on that temporary stand I made, what, a month and a half ago or something like that when I got it. So like, I, I got to make a, a steady platform for it so I can start doing real work on it. I got to get my CNC mill up and working so I can proceed into doing, I kind of want to, the, the next venture I kind of want to ease into is kind of be more like reblades, I think. I think I want to learn like how to grind the blade tang geometry and that sort of thing. So that's kind of sort of what I want to lead to, lean towards next. Obviously, I don't have the stuff for heat treating, so either I'm going to have to send out or figure something else out. No. But anyway, uh, long story. If you already got work in process, send it. Feel free to. Uh, after what's coming and slows down, I'm going to kind of try to build the shop up a little bit so I can sort of revamp and go a different avenue, or at least slightly different avenue. Like, I still want to do regrind stuff. That's still fun to me. It's just not everything I want to do anymore. Um, so I only really did three this week. Um, these first two are from Lee. Uh, I'd mentioned last week that I was going to do a couple from him. Um, so this is a shaman. I just, every time I grind something or, or do something, I kind of want to do it, approach it a different way until I fine tune, until I found the way that I want to fine tune it to what I like, right? So this is another shaman. Uh, this one was a S90 V. And this time I left, I think you see it right there. It's a little bit more of that flat up there than what I was doing last time. But was taking this all the way up. So I just... I stopped a little bit shy of that. Hopefully that comes off on video where you guys can see that stuff. Um, but this one took, this one was compared to that 15, v, both the last two shamans that they were both 15 Vs. Uh, this one kind of has, I don't know, but maybe it's because of the, uh, I guess I think this is called a burlap, burlap Mercara scale. Uh, because this burlap Mercara, maybe the tone of it or something, but anybody else get owl vibes? I kind of get owl vibes from that grind and that knife. <laughs> I don't know why, kind of sort of, I dig it though. But anyhow, um, nub delete and regrind on this one. And this is another one that kind of sort of, you know, like the very first one I did for Denise, um, kind of lost a little bit of that shaman feel to it. Uh, these kind of both after her giving me feedback and kind of help fine tune what I was doing there. Um, these last two I did were came out really well and I started working on the edges a little bit more. So maybe you can or can't see that in the video, but, um, I did these on a KME, which I, I you know, I, I always like doing edges on the KME. It's just time, right? So sometimes you have the time to do it. Sometimes you don't. Uh, I made time this week, uh, sort of like mornings, afternoons, work a little bit here. Stone one stone progression, 
in the morning or whatever. Uh, so anyway, I, both his got KME edges on them. Uh, this next one is one that a bunch of people have said they were going to send Spartan Harseys, but I think this is, might be the first one I've done. I might have done one other one. I, it's hard to remember at this point, but I believe this is the first one I've done. And this is one of those knives that I really like the knife. It just never, you know, some knives connect with you, some knives don't. This one just never, I've had, I've owned several of them. This one just never connected with me. And I've owned this exact version of this knife, maybe not. I think it was the same steel and everything. Uh, I think I've owned this exact version of this knife, but um, I, I wasn't regrinding then. And uh, I tried to do something different with this one. So this one, I did the compound grind. So hollow belly flat tip and also reground that swedge so it kind of has a nice aggressive look to it I, I like it anyhow so i hope you guys can see it good will like it uh it's not as defined in this you know like a lot of the compound grinds you see that super defined line and some of them just kind of blend in this one kind of blends in right nice and smooth but to me when i'm cutting with a knife i'd rather that smooth blend it seems like it cuts better for me but it's definitely way thinner back in the back but still robust in the tip which is sort of for my EDC uses, from what I like to use a knife, it's that's how I prefer mine. Um, but anyway, another regrind done. I'm happy with that one come out. So I hope you enjoy both those, Lee. Both those do have KME edges on them, so they will be sharp. Um, and this last one was uh, from Kevin. And, um, oh, thank both you guys. You know you know what you sent. I appreciate you both. Um, so... Kevin had wanted he well he he got this knife and he, he put a very acute edge on it so it, it, the you know that secondary bevel was way up the blade so he initially wanted me to do a compound grind but once I saw the how far up the edge that went I would have had to make that tip super thin in order to to kind of accommodate that edge so I just decided to hollow grind the whole thing and so this is his 18 this is an aftermarket scale he had me blast it so uh, I did a the aluminum oxide blast on the on the scale um and the regrind on this one i was gonna do the swedge i really thought about doing the swedge but i, was, I just wanted to leave it alone because i think it has a cool look as is um so this was 100 percent hollow ground all the way out the whole thing so i'm happy with the lines on this one so the this line this plunge liner here following nice sweep sometimes that's harder to do to achieve that than other times for me uh so i'm happy the way this one came out um, I hope you guys both enjoy those knives. Um, oh yeah, so the, I didn't know, I didn't even mention. So this one has the blue factory scale. So it kind of has a different look, you know, the gray and the blue. And at first I was like, I don't know. And then after I play with it for a little while, I kind of like it, man. Like it has a different little vibe to it. Like a little shiny work inside with a robust, kind of manlier. <laughs> show side i guess if you will i don't know if that's the right term or not but you know what i mean more rugged i guess <clears throat> all right so uh those those and uh while we're talking about or recapping while we're talking about being influenced by videos or you know thought provoking or whatever else so last week i want to say it was friday uh my bro steve scotch and things posted a video of a gigantes and if you haven't seen it i highly encourage you to go watch his video but you could tell, especially if you know Steve, that he was like, he really dug the thing. Like, it's ridiculous. It is. And uh, he really dug it. But he also mentioned that, hey, there might be some EDC specialties. And then he sent me a link to one that was like a, the Plain Jane version. And I looked at it and was like, man, I like it. But I wasn't really sure. Like, I was kind of back and forth on the whole thing. But as you can see, uh, this DLC one popped up. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to try it out. So, yes, this is a very long and skinny knife. Um... When I say skinny, I just mean like profile this way. Cause like compared to like a normal knife, I'm just gonna pull the Satu out for a second. <clears throat> so you can see the Satu is much taller in this dimension than the Gigantes is. But you can see how much longer the Gigantes is. And the Satu is not a small knife either. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to handle one of these, but you've handled like say a Proxima. Um, I had the Proxima a while back. Uh, it kind of came in and went. Uh, I can't remember what I traded it for, but man, the action is very similar. It's very similar to the Proxima. Um, so if you've handled the Proxima, it's pretty much the same. I've seen some of these older ones that didn't seem to have quite as good action. 
Well, these new ones have a really good action. I'm really happy with it, especially being a DLC. I figured I'd have to break it in more, and it did have some lock stick, and it's still it's working itself out. It has a little bit every now and then, but it's starting to loosen up pretty good. Um, but yeah, like for as long as how nice it is, it flips really well. Obviously, just got this. I actually got it last night. I've done a little work to it, but I'll kind of sort of go more in a detail on it. But if you're on the fence and you like huge knives, this is basically the same. If you Marauder H, um, that sort of thing, it's the same. So that, that 3 16 uh, scale blade and scale. So it's the same width. This part's good for me. I like that. That's almost like saw two, same things, like same kind of thickness right there. I like that thickness. I just wish it was a little bit taller, but hey, it's, it is what it is. But, um, people, you know, it's like the last video did on that old Dominion, what was it the DVO or whatever? I can't remember what it's called. The uh, one that Jose let me borrow. I had mentioned that some knives, long knives just don't work for me. And, it, and like he commented back, hey, some work and some don't. And it's just, it's individual, right? What does and doesn't work for you, for you as an individual. But for me, like, uh, I don't think it's too big, man. So like, you can see I'm just holding. I'm not trying to stretch my hand out or nothing like that. I'm just holding it and finger chewing the butt. And I mean, I got a little bit of this hanging out, but it's not like tremendous. Like it's, it's, it's a big knife, but it's not huge compared to my hand size or whatever else. Like, I mean, it's, it's a good size knife, but it's not ridiculous. So like for whatever reason, I, maybe that be able to choke up on that thing too. Like I'm just kind of pinching my finger here, but we all do more of a finer task. I found that the length on this one doesn't bother me at all. Like it seems to work for me just great. So I guess maybe ergonomics of it or something. Don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, glad I picked it up. Uh, so these are limited if you don't know. I think they only made 100 of these. And I want to say that EDC Specialties had a few that they're selling that weren't already pre-sold kind of thing. So if you're interested in something like that, you might want to check in on it. Uh, I'm sure some will pop up secondary, but <clears throat> I would say limited amount. But not, from what I can see, this newer version seems to be a better action. Um, I'd really dig the action. I guess the pocket clip's different too. Only thing that I don't like on this new one versus the old one. Let's see if I can even show you guys. So if you look at this top swedge right here, you see how it kind of starts where you get some meat behind it. It looks cool from like that point of view where you kind of see the swoop in on that swedge. Hopefully this makes sense. But from the side profile point of view, I wish they would have took it all the way out, the whole harpoon. To me, like just follow that line all the way out uh, like they did the original one. I hope that makes sense. That's the only like criticism. Uh, criticism I can see on it and it still looks cool if uh, you know from a top point of view it's just from the side point of view and I guess I'd just prefer it to look different but we all different in that right so if that's the only thing I have to complain about on the knife I think it did pretty I think they did pretty damn good for phosphor bronze I would say most most Medford flippers don't flip for shit I mean they put a gigantic flipper on it damn thing's huge but it works good so like I said if you if you felt the proxima like that's pretty much the same action and not that I but I can relate to it anyhow but um yeah get the thumbs up from from me anyhow 18 minutes I gotta wrap it up I gotta go to work y'all be good see you next week later y'all